Cheers, Leon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks, Dave. When I was nine years old, I held a door open for a teacher. And as she walked through, she said, I always knew you could do more than just draw pictures. I was crushed. She opened her own doors after that. <laughs> but more importantly, so did I. I drew more, if anything, hundreds and hundreds of drawings with each fresh perforated sheet an opportunity for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Ghostbusters to peacefully coexist on the living room carpet here in Scunthorpe. Now, I've worked in education myself since then, so I choose my words very carefully. Creativity makes you powerful. My drawings would eventually put books on the shelves of that teacher's classroom, and then in other classrooms in that school. The myth that we need to dispel today is that creativity doesn't pay. It does. It absolutely does pay. Creative people can communicate complex ideas, can plan and deliver workflows on time, can analyze disparate information and connect it together. They can evaluate abstract matter and they can collaborate with one another. Which employer wouldn't want somebody with those skills? Anyone? How amazing is that? And creative subjects teach that. Forbes this year listed the 10 most important skills for the next 10 years in all industry. And every day, creative subjects teach eight out of 10 of those. Judge for yourselves. Critical thinking, emotional intelligence, Collaboration, leadership, flexibility, <laughs> um, curiosity, and continuous learning. I think I did seven, right? I'll do. The DCMS reported that creative industry is worth 115.9 billion pounds to the UK economy. Now, sometimes these numbers lose a bit of significance, so I'm going to give you a bit of context. The steel industry contributes two billion. Now, even a creative person like me can work out that that's um, 113.9 billion, isn't it? Got there, <laughs> phew. More than steel. More than steel. It's not a hobby, is it? It's not a nice thing to have if the time or budget allows at the end of the year. It's a creative industrial revolution. Let's think about that for a minute. It's a creative industrial revolution. 115.9 billion pounds. And it's not a gift. It can be taught. Creativity is not a gift. It can be taught. Every single person in this room is creative, can have a unique idea. And let me tell you something else. Creative people have the ability to learn lots of things really well. They are continuous learners. And that's because creativity is a process. And it starts with the really essential question, what happens if? What happens if we try that? Now, of all the courses in all of the world, the one that asks this question really, really well is the Art and Design Foundation course. Now, if you're not familiar with Art and Design Foundation courses, it's a one-year course where you spend the entire year finding your creative talents through project-based learning. It started in the 1920s Bauhaus and then was pioneered in Leeds in the 1950s. And that course, it still exists to this day, all around the world, and also in this very college. Imagine a workforce where everybody took a year out to find their talents before leaping in. Imagine a workforce where people knew who they were, what their values were, before taking that first job. It's not a hobby, is it? <laughs> it's essential. Imagine that workforce, that's what the result will be. 
Now, every single person in this room is creative, and every single person in the other rooms watching this is creative. And I'm here today to tell you there is an infrastructure that you can build around creativity and that difference to create value. Now, Gavin Turk, who's a very famous international British artist, said that every single person should do a foundation course. It should be like national service. And I agree, imagine that. That'd be absolutely wonderful, wouldn't it? But it's really important that we consider that question, like what is creativity for? Why is it important? And how do we build that in infrastructure around difference? So I'm gonna go to a famous artist called Carita Kent. Now, Carita Kent was really a pioneer in lots of different ways. She was, her work was concerned with things like racism, poverty, and war. Now, sadly, those things are still prevalent in our society and concerns we all face. But she also developed these rules for art school, and I'm delighted to say they're more than relevant for today. In fact, I'd go as far to say they're the code for creativity. I'm gonna share three of those rules with you today. There's 10, you should look this up. It's really great. First rule is find a place that you trust and try trusting it for a while. Something American educational psychologist Abraham Maslow would call deficiency needs. We need to feel safe, that we belong, and that we can build esteem. The fourth rule Carita goes for is she says, consider everything, everything, an experiment. Now this reminds me of my first day on Art Foundation where educational leader Derek Page gathered all 200 students trying to look desperately cool into a room and he said to us all, suspend your disbelief. Suspend your disbelief. I'll be honest, I had no idea what he was talking about then. <laughs> but, um, but I think I do now. I think what he was saying was, you've got to experiment and you've got to be willing to enjoy that journey rather than leap to the destination. Enjoy that journey of trying to get there. Be brave enough to take it. The next rule, which must be important because she's underlined this one. That's how you know something's important, isn't it, if it's underlined. Nothing is a mistake. There is no win and no fail. There is only make. Thanks, Carita. Picture a school if everybody in that school was set a problem and they got together to solve it. Imagine if Ted shared their biggest challenge with all of its speakers. What would happen? Set one day aside a week, come together as a team, solve a problem, and see where that journey will take you. I'll, I'll, I'll share with you, I don't think you'll just solve one problem, I think you'll solve loads, and a lot more than problems. I think that would be a great team. And I'm very lucky that I get to see this in action every summer when I deliver a creative summer school. I get to see Isabel. She's 14 years old. Her dream is to be a jewelry designer. She designs jewelry at home for fun, but when she comes on a course, she researches the jewelry designer that she loves. She experiments with the materials. She sets a budget. She plans the project, and she sells that jewelry on the high street in her hometown. Or Persephone. Her dream is to own her own patisserie. Yum. She, though, she experiments with healthy ingredients, develops a really dynamic recipe card, tests her recipes on her peers, and then sells those cakes with the recipe on the high street at 14. Now, as an educator, let me tell you, there is no greater feeling than seeing one of your students clinging onto a card machine, their faces illuminated with joy as they make their fifth sale of that day. That's why creativity is important. Creativity makes you powerful. My favorite place in Scunthorpe is the fountain in Central Park. Good name for a park, that, isn't it? <laughs> Famous. But Central Park in Scunthorpe is a municipal park, and there's a fountain right in the middle of that park. And during the lockdown, it was a real place of solace for me where I could find peace think about how I could even think about taking on those challenges ahead. And sadly, John Whittle, who designed that photograph, passed away during the pandemic. But that fountain was designed in the 1960s, and John designed it between leaving work on a Friday and going back in Monday morning. His boss said to him, oh, all right, John, 
if you really want a fountain, get those designs in by Monday. And he did. And 60 years later, that fountain is still there for all of us to enjoy. And every time somebody puts washing powder into that fountain, that's creativity too. <laughs> but let me let you into another secret. John Whittle knew it, knew it, and I want to share it with you as well. Creativity is not a gift. It's something you have to work at. It makes you powerful because you've got to work at it. And it responds to that question, what happens if? Keep coming back to that question, what happens if? And the answer to that question takes guile, determination, effort, and it can be taught. Pro program leaders, project managers, one day a week, that's all I'm asking. Set the time aside, devote that time with your team, and see what happens with those results. If you still doubt me a little bit, which you might, think about when we do lose a loved one. It's not their emails or their accounts that give us solace. We share poems, songs, and photographs. Creativity matters. Creativity makes you powerful. Thank you.